At some point, every streamer has dealt with it. Pixelated, blurry, grainy, low quality streams that just look unpleasant to watch. If you're not a tech wizard, it can be extremely frustrating to try and fix these types of issues, especially when you look at OBS and it looks okay, but then you load up your Twitch page and bam, it's unwatchable. But today in this big bad video, I'm going to show you some ways to fix these types of problems and make your streams look as sharp as some of the top streamers on the platform with just a few simple OBS changes. Let's get started. Firstly, let's talk about the pixelation or the blurriness you might see on your stream. It could happen only when you're moving around or panning the camera really fast, or it could be a consistent issue. Now, I'll be honest, I struggle with this issue myself. Uh, some of my earliest streams, especially my Skyrim ones, suffered from really poor visuals and these weird artifacts, especially when moving the camera fast or, or entering forest areas of the game. Now, the issue that I was experiencing and the issue you're likely facing is directly related to your bitrate. Now, when you stream to YouTube or Twitch, your bitrate is what dictates how much data you are sending to their servers. In essence, the higher your bitrate, the nicer the stream will look. The lower the bitrate, the worse your stream could look. In OBS, the data that you're transmitting is measured in kilobits per second. And if the value you enter is too low, this can result in the blurriness or the, the pixelation that you see in your streams. That's why on your OBS preview window, it looks perfectly fine, but when you go to Twitch, you see the issue. It's because you're transmitting that data. It's the bitrate. Now, here you can see what this stream of Fortnite looks like at just 1,000 kilobytes per second. Now, at 1080p, 60 FPS, this stream is basically unwatchable to me. You can barely make out anything as I run around and blow up some cars, and it just doesn't look good. However, you'll notice that if I stand still in a pretty calm environment, the visuals improve slightly. This is because when there's nothing happening on screen, your encoder doesn't need to transmit extra data. It can simply tell Twitch to hold on to the current frame it has and just make tiny tweaks if necessary. That's what the keyframe setting in OBS relates to. Every time a keyframe occurs, regardless of on-screen content, the encoder will generate a brand new frame to send to Twitch. This is to prevent smearing and the guessing game algorithm garbage that can occur uh, if you don't properly reset every once in a while. You can even see the keyframes popping up in this example. So in OBS, if I raise my bitrate by entering the output settings menu, you can see a significant improvement in the quality of the stream. And when I run around, no more pixelation, or at least significantly reduced pixelation. So great, problem solved. We should all just crank our bitrate up to a million and just have crystal clear streams, right? Well, no, and it's for a couple of reasons. Firstly, you need to take your network's upload speeds into consideration. If your upload speed is too low and you set your bitrate way too high, this can cause a lot of issues that are annoying for your viewers, like stuttering, dropped frames, or complete disconnections. Additionally, Twitch and YouTube actually have caps for how high you can set your bitrate in OBS. For non-partners on Twitch, this value is kind of low at 6,000 kilobytes per second. And while you can technically go past this value, it's really not recommended unless you're a partner and it can cause some issues for you in the long run. For YouTube, however, the bitrate limit is much, much higher at a staggering 51,000 kilobytes per second. Now, if you want to make sure that the bitrate you set is perfect for you, you're going to need to determine your network speed. Now, there are many websites for determining this. Uh, you can use speedtest.net. That's typically the simplest one, but there are many other options out there. On my network, my upload speed tops out at about 20 megabytes per second. Next up, check what your streaming platform recommends you use for your encoder settings. Now, I typically stream on Twitch, which, by the way, if you'd like to watch me live on Twitch, you can check out my Twitch channel, Technobeaver, uh, link in the description. Now, Twitch recommends that if you're going to be streaming at 1080p, 60fps, that you use a bitrate of 6,000. Now, since I know my network can handle that, and I have so much headroom for you know, Discord and, and the game to actually operate, I should have no problem. I'll set my bitrate to that, I'll leave my rate control at constant, and 
I should be all set. Now I've left resources in the description below that you can check out to see what YouTube and Twitch recommend for your encoding settings for specifically what resolution and frame rate you're targeting. Now, if your network upload speeds aren't high enough for the bitrate, resolution, and frame rate that you're targeting, you're gonna need to drop your settings. Especially if you wanna maintain a solid connection that won't result in dropped frames or disconnects. Again, refer to the provided documentation in the description below. You can additionally help yourself by keeping your stream overlay simple and, and static, especially if your network requires you to push your bitrate pretty down hard. The less detailed and animated that your overlay is, the less harder your encoder needs to work and the less data it needs to transmit. It's not going to be a huge help, but any improvement is an improvement. If you're looking to really boost your stream quality up, however, there are a few other tips I would recommend you take a look at. Firstly, if you aren't streaming at your base resolution, but you're actually downscaling to a lower resolution, like 720p for example, you might want to consider experimenting with what downscaling filter that you use. Without getting very technical, a downscaling filter will take groups of pixels and map them into one singular pixel for a downscaled resolution. The two most widely used filters are Bicubic and Lanxos. Lanx Lanxos? Lanx hold on. Lanxos. Up on the screen now is a comparison of these two filters, zoomed in 175%. Now, if you pixel peep on the Lanxos filter, you can definitely notice some shimmering on the little tentacle hair of the character, and especially on the shovel as well. But personally, to my eye, uh, I personally think the Lanxos filter looks a bit sharper, especially on the roof where you can see some more fine details there. In the end, however, the filter that you end up using is going to be highly dependent on what game you're playing, how low you're lowering your resolution, and uh, what looks best to you. I would really recommend taking some time to experiment and see which filter is right for you. And if you're using a low-end PC that you're streaming on, uh, it is important to note that Lanxos is the most demanding of the downscaling filters to use, so might be something to keep in mind. Lastly, depending on your system specs and your stream setup, you may want to consider using an entirely different encoder. Now, if you use an NVIDIA GPU, NVENC can deliver spectacular visual results using specialized chips on your GPU. The great thing is that using NVENC only has a very minor, if any really, performance impact on your games because, again, it's using those specialized encoder chips on the board. This means it's great for a one PC setup where you're streaming and playing the game on the same computer like I am. In my machine, I use an RTX 2070 for both streaming and playing my games. I use it all the time on max quality preset, and I've gotten some really good feedback from viewers about how my stream looks. It's mainly positive. It's important to note that if you have an AMD GPU, you probably also have a similar hardware encoding solution on your card. Now, if you have an absolute beast of a machine or you're using a two PC setup where one computer is gaming and one computer is streaming, you may want to consider using X264. X264 typically gives you better results, but at the cost of increased CPU load. Again, I would not recommend this for most people on a one PC setup, especially if you have an NVIDIA GPU with NVENC available. But if the games you're streaming aren't really demanding, or you're only doing webcam streams, or you really just want to prioritize quality, then X264 is a great choice. Now, if you're using X264, make sure you take note of your CPU usage preset. There are tons of options you can pick from, but the slower you go, the nicer your stream will look, but also the higher the CPU load will be. I personally would steer clear of the Intel QuickSync encoder, especially if you have an older Intel CPU, because honestly, you'll just get better visual quality and performance by utilizing Nvidia or AMD's offerings instead. Now, I hope these tips helped you out a lot in improving your streams and your streaming setup. If they did, a like and a subscription would help me out immensely. Now, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or you can join my Discord server and hang out with me in there. The link to that, along with all of the other educational resources, are in the description below. That's all for this video, but goodbye.